Good Wednesday evening to you. We want to welcome you again to the Trinity Baptist Church in Westfield, North Carolina. And if you don't have a church to attend or you're looking for a church to attend, I do want to take time to invite you to come and be with us in any or all of our services. Our Sunday morning services start at 10 o'clock. We have Sunday school preaching at 11, Sunday nights at 6, Wednesday nights at 7. We're located at 1233 College Town Road in Westfield, North Carolina. We also have an FM transmitter for those that are unable to come inside due to sickness. They can still come to the church, sit in their vehicle in the parking lot, and tune their radio to 92.9 FM and be able to hear what's going on inside. That's for those that are sick and can't come in. And also for those that are maybe disabled to where they can't come in, they can still come to church and get in on the Word of God. Boy, it's good to be with you this Wednesday evening. I trust that this will be a help to you and an encouragement to you. And that's my heart's desire. I can't do that without the Lord helping me. So we desire your prayers this evening. We use this for our Wednesday night Facebook service for those that are shut in, those that are having to work and can't come to church on Wednesday night. Lord willing, we'll be having our service uh, tonight, asking God to bless that. And I'm glad, thank God, that he can, aren't you? I'm glad, praise the Lord, that God can help us. He sure is good. Well, let's go to the Lord in a word of prayer. Ask God to bless, and I know the Lord's able to. And pray with us and pray for us if you would. Father, thank you so much for the privilege to pray. Thank you for being so good to us. And Lord, I pray you'd bless everything that's said and done, that it would all be done to glorify and to praise and to lift you up. I pray, Lord, that you'd just touch your word and it go out exactly where it needs to go. You said your word wouldn't return void. It would accomplish, Lord, what you want done. I pray, God, for the many that are sick in body this evening, Lord, that are unable to go, that you'd help them, Father, and others that are. And I pray, God, for these that's had death in their families. Lord, I pray that, God, you'd just comfort them. I pray for uh, all of our missionaries tonight, God, that you'd bless them, especially for the Brent Rochester and his family, members here at Trinity. And, Lord, I pray you'd bless them in a wonderful way. And I pray for little Chloe. And God, you continue to touch her physically as well, as well as other physical problems some of the family has. Lord, bless them. Lord, I thank you for being so good. I pray you deal with the heart of that poor lost sinner. Near as hell, God, that they'll see their need to be saved before it's too late. I'm glad Jesus, Father, I'm glad he gave his life for everybody. But only those that will repent and get saved, I know, will go to heaven. But Jesus gave his life for that everybody could go if they just repent and get right. Father, help us today. Touch our voice. Help us to be a blessing. And we'll praise you for all you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to do a congregational number. And let me just say this. Tonight, in our midweek service, Brother Ben Atkins will be preaching. Brother Ben will be filling in for us tonight at the church. And we're looking forward to Brother Ben. He's a blessing. And I love Brother Ben Atkins. He's really been a blessing to our church. A young preacher. Uh, sings and plays with By Grace Bluegrass Gospel, plays guitar and sings, but uh, great man of God. And uh, he'll be with us tonight in the service preaching and pray that God will bless him in a great way. Let's do this old congregational number that about everybody ought to know. If you don't know it, <clears throat> excuse me, you need to know it. It's called Amazing Grace. Boy, aren't you glad for that? God's Amazing Grace. Amen. Sing with us if you would on this congregational number if you would. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was blind, but now. God's praise 
to you. Love that old hymn, Amazing Grace. There is no telling how many times that song has been sung. And uh, boy, I tell you, I appreciate it myself. Make sure I'm in tune here before we do another one. Make it a little flat right there. Maybe not. Maybe not. Something ain't right. I'll figure it out here in a minute. As far as announcements goes, as I said, Brother Ben Atkins, he'll be preaching uh, tonight in the service. We're looking forward to Brother Ben being there and filling in for me, and I appreciate Brother Ben being willing to do that. Of course, we always want to pray for Sunday morning services and Sunday night services and Wednesday night services and all the services that, that God would bless. He sure is worthy of it praise and I'm glad that he's able to help us. I'll get it in tune. I had it in tune. What happened? This song is called When the Call Comes Don't Worry About Me. And Right after the song, Lord willing, we'll pray and we'll uh, look into the Word of God and be getting out that good old authorized King James Bible and turning with us to the book of Luke chapter number 22. Luke chapter number 22 down about verse number 66, Luke 22, 66. And uh, we'll do this old song for you. We'll be blessing to you today. I was thinking today of my life here on earth, thinking back over the years. There's been a lot of heartaches, sorrow and pain. There's been disappointment and tears. There's also been joy. And a deep settled peace that only the born again know. His spirit that leads me, keeps me and feeds me, that he gave me when he made me whole. Don't worry about me when it comes time to leave. I'm going to a far better place. On heaven's gold strand, not My Savior, forever I'll be. His blessed assurance gave me strength for endurance. When the call comes, don't worry about me. How precious it's been, Jesus, my friend, walking together each day. He's with me in the valley. He's with me on the mountain. He'll be with me each trial I face. I know there's a time, a place, and a day when my journey towards home is complete. When my work here is done and my last song is sung, He'll call, but don't worry about me. Don't worry about me when it comes time to leave. I'm going to a far better place. On heaven's gold strand, not made with hands, basking in his love and his grace, singing his praises through the countless ages with my Savior forever I'll be. His blessed assurance gave me strength for endurance. When the call comes, don't worry about me. Yes, his blessed assurance. Gave me strength for endurance. When the call comes, don't worry about me. Yeah, man, I'm glad that if we're saved, our loved ones don't have to worry about us. When the time comes for us to leave, 
thank God for being so good. Well, we'll lay this guitar down and we're going to pray and we're going to be in Luke, Lord willing, Luke chapter number 22. Luke chapter number 22. Let me go lay this guitar down. I'll be right back. All right, Luke 22, let's pray. Father, thank you for the privilege of being able to sing a little bit this evening, Lord, and I pray you'd help us as we look at your word. Thank you for all your blessings. We're so unworthy of them, but thank you for them. Thank you for just being so good to us and help us right now as we look at your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. All right, we're traveling right through the book of Luke on these Wednesday night Facebook services and uh, we've started in chapter one and working our way through and we got through chapter 22 and down about verse number 66 and our Lord has been betrayed. He has been arrested. He's being tried and that's where we're at right now here in the word of God. And uh, he goes through all that he goes through because of his love for you and his love for me. And you know what? He's going to get to Calvary. Thank God. Hey, they, they tried to kill him several times, do away with him, but he was going to Calvary. Boy, aren't you glad of that? And let's look at the word of God this evening, and let's go back up to verse number 63, speaking of a little bit of how they treated the Lord. We're not reading out any of the gospel accounts right now, but just here in the book of Luke. The Bible says in verse 63, and the men that held Jesus mocked him. We talked about that a little bit last Wednesday night. They mocked him. They made fun of him. Ain't no telling what all they said to him. To be honest with you, it's not recorded. I can imagine them probably saying something like this. Yeah, if you really was who you say you are, you wouldn't be going through all this. You ain't who you say you are. That's why we're able to hold you. That's why we're able to smite you. The Bible says they mocked him and smote him. That means to hit him, smack him. Think about that. And when they had blindfolded him, verse 64 says, they struck him on the face and asked him, saying, prophesy who it is that smote thee. They blindfolded him so he couldn't see who they were. And then they smacked him across the face and said, prophesy who it is that smote you. Listen, he knew exactly in eternity past who would smite him. He knew exactly who was smiting him. And verse 65 says, and many other things blasphemous, blasphemous, Blasphemously spake they against him. That word's hard for me to say sometimes. Blasphemously. I mean, they, they ran him down. They, they said he wasn't the Christ. They might have said he was of Satan. I don't know what all they said, but they blasphemed him, the Bible says. Now verse 66. As soon as it was day, the elders of the people and the chief priests and the scribes came together and led him into their council, saying, Art thou the Christ? Tell us. Art thou the Christ? Tell us. He already had. He said, if I tell you, you will not believe. Now listen, he said, if I tell you, you will not believe. And if I also ask you, you will not answer me, nor let me go. Now look at verse 69. Hereafter shall the Son of Man sit on the right hand of the power of God on the right hand of the power of God. He's talking about he'll be sitting at the Father's right hand. He is letting them know who he is. Then said they all, art thou then the son of God? And he said unto them, ye say that I am. And thank God he was, wasn't he? And verse 71 says, and they said, what need we any further witnesses? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. They accused him of blaspheming. They accused him of not being the Christ. They accused him of being a liar. They accused him of being a troublemaker. They accused him of being an imposter. But thank God he was the Christ, the only begotten son of God that would come into the world to die on the cross for men's sins, to shed his blood so that men, women, boys, and girls could be saved. And that's what they're going to sentence him to. They said in verse 71, and they said, what need we any further witness? For we ourselves have heard of his own mouth. And the whole multitude of them arose, chapter 23 now, verse one, and the whole multitude of them arose and led him to Pilate. Now see, they were under Roman rule at this time and they could not legally put a man to death unless Pilate okayed it. They couldn't put somebody to death. 
So they carried Jesus. They took Jesus to Pilate. The Bible says the whole multitude of them arose and led him to Pilate. And when they got there, the Bible says in verse 2, and they began to accuse him. They began to accuse him, saying, this is what they said about the Lord. We found this fellow perverting the nation. Well, that was a lie. The first accusation here that they give in chapter 23 is a lie. He wasn't perverting the nation. Thank God he was trying to get the nation to get back on the right path to get back on the right path. They accused him of this fellow perverting the nation and forbidding to give tribute to Caesar. That was a lie as well. That was a, a lie as well. He said he had said, render unto Caesar the things that are Caesar's and render unto God the things that are God's. He hadn't forbid him to give tribute to Caesar. But then they said this, saying that he himself is Christ the king. Well, that was true. He was, wasn't he? He was Christ the king. And Pilate asked him, saying, Pilate asked the Lord, said, Art thou the king of the Jews? Art thou the king of the Jews? And he answered him and said, Thou sayest it. Then said Pilate to the chief priests and to the people, I find no fault in this man. That's the first time Pilate says that. He'll say that two more times. Pilate says, I find no fault in this man. Now let me say something about that before I go on. There was no fault to be found in that man, the Lord Jesus Christ. He could have searched for 20 years and never found a fault in the Lord Jesus Christ. Now listen, that can't be said about you and me, can it? But thank God he looked at Christ, he examined him, and here's what he said in verse 4, I find no fault in this man. Oh, there's plenty of fault in you and me, but there's no fault in Christ. And Pilate said, I find no fault in this man. And the Jews didn't want to hear that. See, they wanted him to be condemned to death. And they were the more fierce, verse 5 says, saying, he stirreth up the people, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. He, he stirred up the people. Now listen, the people were under Roman rule, under Pilate's authority at that time, the Jews were. So here's what they say about it. He stirreth up the people, verse 5, teaching throughout all Jewry, beginning from Galilee to this place. He's stirring up the people. You know what they're trying to do? They're trying to intimidate Pilate into agreeing to crucify the Lord. Verse six says, when Pilate heard of Galilee, he asked whether the man were a Galilean. And as soon as he knew that he belonged into Herod's jurisdiction, he sent him to Herod, who himself also was at Jerusalem at the time. And when Herod, now this is the one that, that killed John the Baptist. And when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceeding glad, the Bible says here in Luke for he was desirous to see him of a long season because he had heard many things of him and he hoped to have seen some miracle done by him. Then he questioned with him in many words, but he answered him nothing. Jesus would not even answer Pilate. He would not even give him an answer. And the chief priests and scribes stood and vehemently accused him. And Herod with his men of war set him at naught and mocked him and arrayed him in a gorgeous robe and sent him again to Pilate. And the same day, Pilate and Herod were made friends together for before they were enmity between themselves. Verse 13. And Pilate, when he had called together the chief priests and the rulers and the people, said unto them, here's what Pilate said about the Lord, ye have brought this man unto me as one that perverteth the people. Now notice what he said. Notice how that's worded. Thank God for this old authorized King James Bible. It don't need to be changed. Listen to what he says. He said in verse 14. He have brought this man unto me as, as one, not that he had, but as one that perverteth the, the people. And behold, this is what Pilate says, I, having examined him before you, have found no fault in this man touching those things whereof you accuse him. He's not guilty. He's not guilty. That's what he said. I find no fault in him the second time. Notice what else he said, verse 15. No, nor yet Herod, for I sent you to him, and lo, nothing worthy of death is done unto him. Pilate says in verse 16, I will therefore chastise him and release him, for of necessity he must release one of them at the feast or the feast of the Passover. 